And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys, I hope you're all well before we do get into today's video as always. Please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Rangers content. Guys, in today's video we're going to be discussing the huge mistake that Rangers have made according to multiple fans and in the media. We're also going to be discussing or providing you with a Danilo update, whilst also going over a few other bits and pieces with regards to Rangers Football Club. Yes, let's start with Danilo. Of course, Danilo did go off uh, in the game game against St. Johnston after I think he fractured his cheekbone or fractured his eye socket or something like this um, and basically yeah he looked like he just went a few rounds with Tyson Fury it really did look bad this came after he scored Rangers opening goal and I did feel sorry for the player because he just hasn't really got going for Rangers and then he kind of comes in gets his start gets his goal does everything right and then has to go off the pitch and now it looks like he could be out for a little while now at the time Michael Bill did provide us an update that the player would have to go for surgery uh, and now it does look like the surgery has been completed Danilo did provide us with an update on social media first and foremost he did a passage from the bible it said i lift my eyes up to the mountain where does the help come from my help comes from the lord and the maker of heaven and earth the lord watches over you the lord is your shade at your right hand side the sun will not harm you by day nor by night the lord will keep you all from harm he will watch over you life the lord will watch over coming and going both now forevermore then in the second slide he basically puts surgery tick now it's time to rest and heal hope to see you all soon now it is being kind of quoted that this will probably take around three weeks for him to be ready to go again maybe he might have to play with a protected mask um, as Celtic fans are now dubbing that Rangers are copying Celtic because their players are going to have to play with a mask they were like oh he did it first no look it's just a broken face um, but yeah situation is that of course he will have to probably wear a mask a protective mask um, but Having said this, the beauty of it is that you can play. Maybe just a little bit of time now, a couple of weeks, to get himself going, rest and heal a little bit, and then he can play with that protected mask, which is good. It's not like a leg where you can't play football or anything like that. So that is a positive within the, the, within the negative, but surgery has been done, and that is fine, and hopefully we'll have Danilo back very, very soon. Now, in other news, just briefly as well, uh, the MSM are running away with this one, that Ryan Kent is having a bit of a torrid time out in Fernabas. At the moment, of course, left Rangers at the expiry of his contract um, and was a good servant for Rangers in the first few years. And I really did think Ryan was destined for the top, came from a great pedigree in Liverpool and kind of went to, to Rangers. And I just felt that he may have needed a fresh start. And um, I thought he would probably get picked up by a Premier League team or something like that. However, he shocked us all and joined uh, Fernabashe out in the Turkish Super League. And this is not to begrudge um, Fernabashe. I do think they're a pretty big club and they're, they're fantastic. I think they're cooking up something pretty nice as well uh, this year with the money that they're spending with the recruitment that they've bought in they bought in some really good players uh, that's in that summer transfer window. However, Ryan Kent isn't having the best of times out there at the moment. He did come off the bench um, in a most recent game, but has been on the fringes of the squad and has failed to start in the last three matches. Um, so no, not going awful, or not going the best currently for Ryan um, out in Fernabashe. Um, of course, I do hope it goes well for him very soon, but yeah, not good to see uh, with regards to that. Um, a lot of these Rangers players don't know how good they have it until they leave do they um but as i said yeah having a bit of a difficult start to life in uh Fernabashi and in turkey now with regards to transfers of course we did make nine additions in the summer um, and as I said, we've all had our judgment. We've all passed our judgment. I know it's still early days within this sort of new season, but, you know, Rangers fans are like, we know what we're like. We're quite judgy pretty early on, so we should. We pay the money. Um, so we, we should have a say, and we should be judging players um, whenever we want. But as I said... You know, a lot of the discussion, a lot of the topical discussion with regards to the signings that we have brought in this summer transfer window has been with regards to the striking department. Now, this is where the positions where it does seem as though it has been pretty much wholesale changes. A lot of players have went out. Alfredo Morales, Ryan Kennedy, we just touched upon that. Vasco Zakala, the list goes on, right? And then, of course, the new players came in. Danilo, Dessa, Sam Lammers, Sima, all these other players that came in as well. No one's really hit the ground running for Rangers just yet. 
However, during the summer transfer window, I remember bringing up a name to you guys, and I did say that Rangers were very much interested in the player. And now it looks as though that Rangers may have made a mistake not pursuing the target, who was half the price of Danilo, the same price as Dessas, and just a bit more expensive than Sam Lammers. Yes, you may have heard the name on Rangers social media recently. That big man is called Nikola Kristovic, um, who has been fantastic in starting at life with Lecce out in Italy. Hopefully I got that pronunciation right. Lecce or Le Lecce? Lecce. I think it's Lecce. But anyway, um, yes, he's got three and three so far for the Serie A side. And he's been utterly fantastic recently in these first few games. He just looks like a real bright prospect for them. And already uh, within the sort of Italian media space, they are stating that AC Milan and Inter Milan are already keeping tabs on the player and are dubbing him as one for the future. He joined from Day AC Dunska Streda in Slovakia for £3.2 million, which some would say is quite a big transfer fee to pay for a player from maybe Slovakia. However, the credit goes to uh, Leke's sporting director, a 73-year-old who has apparently a renowned ability for spotting gems within the sort of uh, Eastern European leagues and other little areas or smaller countries, if you like. Um, and he's managed to bring in the player. And as I said, he is getting lauded within the Italian Italian media at the moment is being dubbed as a bargain, as reports are also stating Inter and AC Milan are circling and keeping tabs on the player just after a few games at the start of the season, but really does look like a bargain. And comparing it to our strikers in a better league, uh, have we dropped a bollock there? Well, Rangers fans on social media seem to think so. Um, they seem to think that the club have made a huge mistake not going to sign the player. As I said, there was very, very much concrete interest. And as I said, Italian media and all the rest of it are still stating, even in these articles and as he's joined Lecce, and have mentioned Rangers as a team that were interested in the player and were looking to try and make a move for him. However, chose to pursue, quote-unquote, other options. So Rangers were well in the race for this player. It was a player that Rangers could have landed this summer. However, decided, as I said, to opt for a different um, different targets. He scored 23 goals in his final season in Slovakia. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, but when it comes down to identifying players, maybe Rangers may have thought that was a bit of a risk to pay £3.8 million for a player that comes from Slovakia. But as you can see already, it does look as though he's more prolific so far than our strikers. So uh, we'll certainly see um, if we have made a huge mistake going forward. But this just, just sums it up really as well. Do we need, as I said, there's been a lot of conversation recently about um about recruitment and I seem that no one really knows our direction of recruitment over the last couple of years. Our Stephen Jarrett looked quite good uh, with what we were doing. Yes, there were some duds chucked in there as well for every sort of Joe Aribo we were getting. We were kind of uh, also getting a, maybe like a a John Flanagan or something like that. We are getting loads of crap, but we were getting some good players as well. I think we brought in loads. We had a 50-50 success rate, really. But just recently, it just feels that our, our signings are duds, man. Um, and we have no real direction. If you look at Brighton down there in the Premier League, I'll give you a little fun fact. And I know wages do play a big part in it as well. But a weird fun fact for you is that the starting 11 for Brighton against Manchester United, the one that beat Manchester United 3-1, had a combined cost of £16.3 million in, so, uh, in terms of transfer transfer fee. So recruitment is key and what you're getting your players is, is absolutely imperative. So the money excuse is not um cannot be used as an excuse for Rangers. We need to make sure our recruitment is perfect. I said across the other side of the city, they've done well in recent years. Maybe not this summer, but under Ange Postagoglu. Then you look at Ajax Amsterdam, Benfica, all these other sides as well. So getting that recruitment is absolutely imperative. Now, just quick disclaimer, I know Brighton are in the Premier League. A lot of players want to play in the Premier League and Premier League clubs can pay high wages as well. So it still is hard to compete with them. But having said that, being able to find these areas where you can get like uh, a Nikola Kristovic, 
uh, for three, three million quid and doing well, this is where you've kind of got to look around and shop and try and find your area and your transfer strategy. But let's see. But a lot of Rangers fans think we've made a huge mistake and so have the media out in Italy. They are lauding this player at the moment and have name checked to us with uh, concrete interest in the player in the summer and do believe that they've um, got one over Rangers uh, simply by bringing him over to the Serie A. But anyway, Rangers fans, do let me know your thoughts on our transfer strategy and do you think this one will be one that bites us in the arse in years to come? Should we have signed him? Yes or no? Let me know down there in the comment section below. That does bring us to the end of today's video. As always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Rangers content. Thank you guys and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.